thank you, Professor Augustine, for being the chairperson for the session. Moving on, we have invited talks from Professor Augustine Markwigs and Professor TSSR K. Rao. Augustine Markwigs is a professor at the Department of Mathematical and Statistical Methods, oh, Poznan University of Life Sciences, Poznan, Poland. He will be talking on linear admissible estimation revisited. He is one of our invited speakers, having research collaboration with Professor C.R. Rao. We are happy to have you here, sir. Second speaker, TSSR K. Rao, is an adjunct professor, Mahe Manipal, and visiting professor, Ashoka University, Sonipat, India. He is going to present on the topic, Operators, Virkov's James Orthogonal to Spaces of Operators. I request Professor Ramesh C. MIT, Mahe Manipal, to chair the session. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, it will be my pleasure to chat the chair, chat the session. I would like to thank Professor Prasad and the organizer for the invitation and to give me the opportunity to give a talk at ALAPS 2020. But first of all, I'd like to send my best wishes for a happy birthday to Professor Rao and wish him many more anniversaries to come. And in fact, I would like to dedicate my talk to Professor Rao, whose work has greatly influenced my research. And uh, the main to topic of my uh, research was linear admissible estimation. And it is of my presentation. Uh, first, I would like to uh, sh show some pictures uh, from the last visit of Professor Rao in Poznan. Uh, it was in 1991 when Professor Rao was getting honorary degree from Adam Mickiewicz University. It is the main university in Poznan. And uh, it, it was very nice ceremony. And uh, now I, I would like to go to present uh, the problem I would like to I would like to talk about and first I would like to present it just to make some preliminaries I would like to present uh, the model I will consider general Gauss Markov model that it, I will use the notation by the triple y x beta sigma square v where y is the vector and dimensional vector observation with expectation x beta and dispersion matrix sigma square v. Matrices x and non-negative definite matrix v are known, while beta and sigma square, vector beta and sigma square positive number are unknown parameters. And the problem I would like to present it is estimation of arbitrary vector of linear parametric functions, uh, k beta, defined by uh, k by p matrix k. And I, I will consider estimation of k beta among the set of linear estimators of the following form, f y plus f, defined by matrix f and vector, so capital f and vector f. And the criteri uh, criterion of, uh, sorry, criterion of estimation is quadratic risk function uh, that has the following form, and uh, it is, it consists of two parts. First, it is trace of covariance matrix of the estimator, and the second, the second uh, term is the sum of squares of bias of the estimator. And uh, the admissibility with respect to the quadratic risk function is defined as follows, namely estimators a y plus f is said to be admissible for k beta in the class of linear estimators under the model m and with respect to the quadratic risk if there does not exist another linear estimator f y plus f such that the difference of quadratic risk of estimator a y plus a and f plus f is non-negative for all beta and sigma square, and it is non-zero for at least one such pair. And uh, now I would like to present the main motivation, inspiration for this work. Namely, it was the characterization of admissible linear estimators for k beta. 
given in, by Rao in 1976. Uh, and, this characterization is the following under non singular model M. It means model with dispersion matrix V positive definite. And for any estimable K beta, it means defined by matrix K that can be represented as the product CX. Uh, this condition can be expressed in a bit different form, namely that a linear space generated by rows of uh, matrix K is linear subspace of linear space generated by rows of matrix X. And now estimators AY plus A is uh, admissible if and only if the following four condition holds. The first condition is very important. I will mention about it uh, uh, later on again, and it, it is it's telling that the range of matrix V A prime range, it means the linear space generated by columns of the matrix is linear subspace of the range of X. The second condition is telling that the product A V C prime is symmetric matrix. And the third one that the product A V C minus A a prime prime uh, I'm using prime for transpose. It is non negative definite matrix. And the last one is concerned to the uh, vector A defining estimator, namely A belongs to the range of um, uh, matrix A minus C multiplied by X. Now uh, I was putting star here in the, to the, two, the second condition. Uh, maybe when uh, I will assume later on that, non uh, that matrix is non-negative definite, I will assume that such a matrix is symmetric. So this condition can be cancelled. Hmm? Uh, assuming such definition of non-negative definiteness. That is quite common and it is a bit simplified the condition. So uh, uh, Rao work stimulated further research in this area and Rao results were later on generalized to other linear models, namely uh, restricted models and uh, models and multivariate models and so on. Uh, first, uh, uh, first result generalizing uh, Rao uh, result was given by Hoffman in 1977, who gave uh, characterization of admissible linear estimators for parameters vector beta in non singular model and with matrix S X of full column rank. And in the model with so called elliptical restriction of the form beta prime and beta less or equal sigma square, where n is known positive definite matrix. Another uh, result uh, concern uh, model linear model with linear restriction, and these results were given in two papers by Paxlar and Markevich in 1985 and 1986. To to get this result, we were using the following characterization of admissible linear estimators for parameter vector beta in the model. Uh, in the model uh, with full column, uh, with the X of full column rank and with V non singular. Uh, it has uh, the following form and it is telling that uh, X A V is symmetric matrix and the eigenvalues of the product A X, the eigenvalues belongs to the interval from zero to one and that the um, uh, vector F belongs to the space, to the range of I identity matrix minus AX. And uh, I will present uh, one of this, this characterization. It is telling that such, sorry, such estimator uh, is uh, AY plus A is admissible for beta in a restricted model with restriction of the form R beta equal small R and in the non singular model and with the matrix X of full column rank. So such estimator is admissible in restricted model, even only if it is admissible in unrestricted model and it is fulfilling the restriction. So estimator itself is fulfilling its, uh, restrictions. And another characterization is telling that AY plus F is admissible in unrestricted model and expectation of estimator uh, is fulfilling the restriction. So it is quite uh, nice characterization. Uh, now uh, I would like to say something about generalization of Rao result uh, uh, to a singular model. 
First, uh, let me mention the paper by Matthew Rao and Sinka uh, from 1984, in which they were show, showing that in a weakly singular model, uh, it means in the model when in V is possibly singular, but the range of matrix X is subspace of, uh, of range of matrix V. <laughs> and for K beta estimates, uh, estimate Rao con Rao's conditions are unchanged. So we can use exactly the same conditions. Uh, let me say that this condition is quite, uh, um, uh, we can obtain such condition, for example, field, but using some transformation, we are getting uh, met, uh, dispersion matrix of transform, vectoral observation can be uh, singular. Uh, now, the uh, general results concerning uh, general models, it means the model in the, uh, we have uh, when matrix V is possibly singular, but it's not necessary such a condition, such a range condition. And for any estimate vector K beta, uh, the characterization we obtained is the following. It is we, what we can see, we, we have three the same condition from a raw result and with some additional one condition, telling that the range of the uh, matrix A minus C multiplied by X is equal to the range of matrix A minus C multiplied by S. And what is S? S is any matrix such that the range of matrix X is equal to the common part of the ranges of matrix X and uh, uh, matrix V. And now uh, it is very easy to see that when this, uh, when the model is weakly singular, so we can put as matrix S, we can take, uh, sorry, as matrix S, we can take matrix X. So here this condition, of course, is uh, trivially holds and can be cancelled. Mm -hmm. So it is uh, uh, confirmation that, that another way to show that in weekly singular model, we can use only raw conditions. And now, um, a bit inspired by, by the paper by Professor Mitra uh, about, uh, probably the title was about estimation of non-estimate functionals. And we are considering uh, the fully general setup, it means that the model is general, but also, also we have any restriction of the, on the vector k beta. And this characterization was given in 1990. And uh, the, let's say, the most general uh, results was, uh, was given by Baxalare, Markevich and Rao in 1995. And in this paper was given a characterization of admissible linear estimators of k beta and uh, with respect to the weighted uh, quadratic risk. This risk is defined as follows when W is any uh, is matrix of weight that it is any it can be any non-negative matrix. And uh, of course it is assumed that k beta is uh, arbitrary and model is uh, model is general. So next, uh, uh, I am presenting this this uh, problem here, namely a, a matrix risk function uh, denoted by capital R f of y plus f uh, k beta is defined as follows. And it is very easy to see that uh, the quadratic risk is equal to the trace of the matrix risk. So there are, it is the following relation between these two risk, uh, risks. And uh, the, the definition of admissibility with respect to matrix risk is the following. Ay plus f is said to be admissible for k beta among uh, the class of linear estimators and the, the model M. And with respect to the matrix risk function, if there does not exist another linear estimator Fy plus F such that the difference of matrix risks of estimator Ay plus F and Fy plus Ay Ay plus F and Fy plus F is non-negative definite matrix for every pair of parameters beta and sigma square 
and it is not a zero matrix for at least one pair beta sigma square. And the set of admissible uh, estimators, of course, contain uh, uh, estimators uh, admissible with, with respect to the quadratic risk function and the motivation, the inspiration uh, to, for uh, to study this problem was the very important uh, necessary condition for admissibility in, in uh, with respect to the matrix function is the following. I was telling about this condition already uh, that the range of VF prime is linear subspace of range of X. So it is necessary condition for admissibility with respect to the matrix risk but as well as with respect to the quadratic risk. And uh, we obtained this in, in 1989, in the paper Baxelar and Markevich, we obtained general characterization of the class of admissible linear estimators for beta, for any k beta, uh, with respect to the quadratic risk function in a general model. And uh, later on, uh, with Gross, Gross, the paper Gross and Markevich in 1999, we uh, obtained a bit more general uh, characterization of such a class uh, in mixed linear model. And uh, I was using this matrix risk uh, function in uh, the problem of uh, uh, admissible linear estimation in multivariate linear model. In fact, by us introducing uh, uh, another matrix risk function in the case of the setup of multivariate linear model, but also I was considering uh, usual uh, quadratic risk function. And this characterization are given in my, my uh, 2002 paper. So, so it is end of story of uh, matrix risk function, but now I would like to, to mention something, some problems connected with singular model. When the model is so-called strongly singular, it means when the matrix V is singular and the range condition, uh, for, uh, the following range condition uh, is doesn't hold or, or we can say that the range of X is not a linear subspace of range of V. Then beta satisfied so-called so-called uh, natural restriction when Q uh, sub uh, V, it is uh, orthogonal projector into ortho complement of the range of matrix V. And the, the use of this restriction is very hard because, uh, because of the uh, vector of option Y. We can know it only after when experiment is done. So it was quite a big discussion about what to do in such a problem, and we obtained some. Uh, uh, we were giving some recommendation what to do. Oh, sorry, so it is something up. Oh, oh no, I'll make this okay. Yeah, not. Oh. In the paper by Baxelari Rao and Markevich in 1992, uh, 1992, we were uh, recommended that natural restriction can be ignored in the case of linear and bias estimation, uh, minimum dispersion linear and bias estimation, uh, admissible linear estimation with the static and as well as with respect, uh, with respect to the matrix risk function. That this restriction can be ignored, and we showed that uh, when we are considering both class of admissible, of let's say admissible uh, linear estimators. Uh, in the first case, we are including, we are considering this restriction. In the second one, uh, this restriction I ignored. So in this second class, we can always find estimate for an estimator from the first class. We can find an estimator in the second class that is equal, such that both estimators are equal with probability one. So they are stochastically uh, equivalent. And uh, now uh, uh, I would like to say so something about another problem. Uh, it is it means the class of admissible li uh, linear estimators is quite let's say big class. It, it's containing some not so much reasonable estimator. So uh, it is uh, uh, such idea to 
to impose some additional condition to the estimate. And such condition uh, I was studying, it is linear sufficiency. Linear sufficiency was, uh, this name was given by Drigas, who also was giving the following definition of such linear sufficiency uh, of statistic TY for estimation of K beta. But it's, uh, the first such uh, statistics was uh, studied by Baxalar and Kala, and I will uh, use the title of, of the paper as characterization of such uh, such statistics. Namely, the title was telling something like that, that it is uh, transformation, T, T, it is transformation uh, of uh, observation vector Y, preserving the blue. It means that it was possible to derive best linear and bias estimator of K beta by linear transformation of uh, statistics Ty. So it is much, uh, let's say, simpler uh, description of this property. And uh, I was studying this problem in my paper 1996 in the case of estimation of parameter vector beta in the model uh, with uh, matrix X of full column rank. And I was showing that the class of uh, linearly sufficient and admissible estimators are exactly the class of general ridge estimators. And this class was uh, presented in RAO papers on one of the class of estimators that are, uh, uh, are admissible. And uh, later on, we were, uh, oh, sorry, uh, with, oh, in the same year, with Heidegger's. And uh, we are obtaining the characterization of linear sufficient and admissible estimator in restricted linear model with elliptical restriction. So we were following Hoffman paper. And uh, further, uh, later on, I was studying the problem of linear sufficiency and admissibility in misspecified model. It means it is the, the problem started with uh, the famous paper by Mitra and Moore uh, in the of best linear and bias estimation, and it is the the problem is the following that we are we, we are characterizing the linearly sufficient admissible estimators in the model in which covariance matrix V is possibly incorrect, and we have now studied the problem uh, whether the, uh, some of these estimators and we are characterizing such estimators that are uh, linearly sufficient and admissible in correct model. And uh, the, um, continuation of this uh, study of admissibility and linear sufficiency in the model uh, in which Nuisance parameters was done, uh, was presented in the paper Markevich and Puntanen in uh, 2009. And at the end, I would like to say something about uh, the study of the admissibility problems. That is, uh, that it is, uh, there are quite a lot of papers published uh, recently, uh, and uh, these authors were using so-called balance risk function. And when we see this, uh, this R of a Y beta, so it is the problem uh, of the, the problem of estimation of the parameter vector beta. And this uh, risk function has the following form: it is the uh, sum of two terms. First, uh, it is V multiplied by expectation of the following product. When we are looking at this product and we and we replace a y by beta, so the and we are minimizing it. So we are we are getting so-called ordinary least square. So it is this form used to uh, to get uh, the ordinary squares, but the beta now is replaced by estimators of beta a y. And the second term, it is nothing more than a possibly weighted uh, quadratic risk function of such estimator, but multiply by one minus W. And uh, W is a number from the interval from zero to one, a closed interval, and the matrix of weight is a uh, known positive definite matrix. So now we can see that putting a dub, small W uh, equal to zero, so uh, we are getting uh, uh, one of such balanced risk function is usual uh, quadratic risk function. And this result was recently given, for example, in a series of papers by uh, Kao, Kao Kong, uh, He and Wu, and Kao and, and Xiu, probably, if my pronunciation is correct. 
So I would like to thank for for the. I, I, it is the almost end of my presentation, but at the, at the end I would like to present the list of references, and so you you can see the story, the the the, the paper on uh, uh, linear sufficiency, admissibility problems, and. Uh, uh, here we have the paper uh, on natural restrictions and uh, and the paper on uh, in which characterization of admissible linear estimators uh, with uh, respect to the arbitrary quadratic risk function uh, uh, is given. And later on, there are two papers on uh, admissibility with respect to balanced uh, uh, risk function and uh, oh, sorry. And here is a paper by Drigas when he was giving, he was using the first the name of linear sufficiency, and, uh, and he was showing that the linearly sufficient statistics under normality is sufficient in usual sense. And uh, so, to, it, uh, okay, so these papers I was giving, and and here are the, the papers uh, still about about admissibility and partially linear sufficiency. It is a paper. Uh, when the characterization of general rich estimator was given using the term of linear sufficiency admissibility, and at the end we have the, this uh, raw papers, the title is estimation of parameters in a linear model. It was published in Annals in 1976, and at the end we have some additional references. Uh, I would like to say at the, uh, at the end about one of them of, of this. This references, namely, it is in this paper, um, uh, the authors were considering continuous time Gauss Markov model. So it is another way of of generalization of uh, linear sufficiency and linear admissibility uh, problem. So thank you very much for uh, for giving me opportunity for presenting my talk. This end of my talk. Thank you very much. I had several questions. Yes, yes. I'll write to you through mail. Mm -hmm. And uh, I invite you to participate in uh, this presentation function at 9 o'clock Indian time. OK, please join us. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, Sima was uh, reminding me. OK, so we can we'll have opportunity to discuss maybe a bit more. <laughs>